Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how this drop point fixed blade was made. Now this is AEBL stainless steel. It's got an electro etched blade finish and it also has a cherry burl hybrid scales. I did a whole separate video on making the handles. So in this video we're just going to give an overview of the knife making process. This particular project started out as one of my uh, water jet cut blanks. I make these blanks so that uh, they're kind of universal. Uh, you can make drop points out of it. You can, you can change the profile uh, quite a bit. I started by doing the rough grinds on a 2x72 grinder. This is with a uh, coarse grit belt. Uh, this is a 60 grit, I believe. I use a tilt table bevel grinding jig. Uh, this is uh, a table that mounts to uh, a standard inch and a half tooling arm, so it'll fit any belt grinder that holds uh, or has the capability of holding a second tooling arm. Uh, the tilt table is great because it has a lot of flexibility, uh, not only with, with the angle, uh, it moves up and down, left to right, etc., et and it really makes grinding the bevels kind of easy. And of course, grinding good bevels with nice straight bevel lines is really the key to putting out a a good quality uh, finished product. So just doing the rough grinds here, they don't have to be perfect, uh, but it is a really good opportunity uh, to practice and get the feel for um, doing the finished bevels, which will be done after heat treating. So the rough bevels I do usually with coarse grit, depending on the thickness of the steel. Um, I could use a 36, I can use an 80. Uh, most times on these small knives, I'm sorry, not an 80, a 60. Uh, most time on these small knives, I'll end up using a 60. And once the uh, bevel is done on one side, then I just move over to the other side. Um, all you do is basically hold the plank flat against the table um, below being in contact with the belt, and then you move it up into contact with the belt. Um, and you're going to uh, grind to the scribed lines on the edge of the blade called railroad track lines. So you have a visual reference um, as to how thin you want to grind these, these bevels. I always have a bucket of water next to the grinder so I can cool down the knife as it gets hot. But it really doesn't take long. Um, you can probably bevel each side or do the rough grinds on each side about you know three or four minutes per side on a knife like this. I have a lot of guys that use this uh, just to establish the bevel and then after heat treating they'll go back and freehand uh, grind in order to finish. Um, I use the, the tilt table for, throughout the whole process. So you always want the last pass uh, to be a good one, kind of fluid from one side to the other. I think it I think it took just about three, three and a half minutes to grind that side. So the rough grinding is done. Uh, the blade is profiled. I've also got holes drilled through the handle, um, you know, for the pins. And I've got some additional divots in the handle just to let that epoxy grab onto the handle a little bit better. That would be the epoxy for gluing the handles in place. The next process, and I'm not going to go through the whole heat treating process, but this is stainless steel. So in stainless, you wrap it with tool wrap. Um, you heat treat it in a heat treating oven. Uh, AEBL gets heat treated at 1960 degrees for uh, 15 minutes. And then I plate quench them. Um, so I, I clamp them between two aluminum uh, pieces of aluminum tubing. And I blow cold air through a, a compressor uh, in order to bring down that temperature. And then they actually... Um, have a sub-zero quench and also a tempering, two tempering cycles in a uh, in an oven. After the heat treating, uh, I did a quick electro etch on the um, on the blade just to give it the textured look, and then I figured I'd grind away so that the uh, grind marks would contrast that blade etching. I went right back to the tilt table and uh, used an, a now an 80 grit. Uh, I just cleaned up the bevels. The post heat treating bevels is much easier. You're just not removing as much material. You're really just cleaning them up 
uh, but you, you also have to be a little bit more careful. So you have to really have a good pass left to right to end up with some nice clean uh, bevel lines. After I did um, the 80, I did also clean them up on a 120. Now most of the sparks will actually end up going behind the tilt table, but um, you, you definitely have some sparks in the front. The main thing is keeping the knife cool um, you don't want it to get too hot after heat treating. You don't want it to, uh, to ruin that temper. So quench it down frequently. And after we're done with, with these uh, bevels or finishing the bevels, uh, really that's the, the hard part of making the knife. One more pass. Once the bevels are finished, and, and here you have a better look at that uh, etched, textured finish I was talking about on the blade itself. That was just electro etched with a 12 volt uh, automotive battery uh, charger um, and electrolyte solution. I made the handles myself uh, for this knife. This is a cherry burl that my friend Rick Shores uh, gave me, some pieces left over from his, um, he turns wooden bowls. And I, I mixed up some resin from totalboat.com. It is their uh, thick set resin, which is a very thin resin that allows you to, um, to make these hybrid scales without the use of a pressure pot. So that because it's so thin, the bubbles rise to the surface very, uh, quickly before the resin dries. So I was able to make these scales very easily. You know, really all you need is, is the, the resin. Um, you bring everything up to room temperature at about 70 degrees. You slow it, you stir it slowly, a uh, couple different color dyes, uh, and a mold. That was it. Um, just like any other handles, I always finish up that, that forward edge or the leading edge of the handles. So I'll, I'll shape it right on the 2x72 and then I'll run through a variety of different grits, uh, you know, down to about uh, two, uh, 240, and then I'll hand sand, um, usually to about 800, and then I'll actually polish that forward edge. One tip uh, for gluing the handles onto the actual blank, especially in the wintertime, is to warm that blank up a bit. You can use a hair dryer or a heat gun for that. Uh, epoxy will stick much better um, when the when the piece you're working on is also up in that 70 degree range. So I glue my scales on one side at a time. Uh, I find this just gives me a little bit more control um, over the finished product. So I'll, I'll glue one on. I'll make sure that I clean it up. I use a little um, rubbing alcohol and a spray bottle, uh, paper towels, just to get off any glue that squeezes it out uh, from the handle as well as any glue that uh, might have been on my hands or, or gotten on the blade at all. Really want to take a good look uh, before that hardens. Uh, then I'm going to use the pre-drilled holes through the blank as my drill guide. So I'm going to drill holes right through that one side of the handle. I'm using a piece of wood underneath so that I don't get any um, blowout on the, uh, on the handles themselves. And you notice I also have a clamp on that drill press table so that this knife, it can't catch on the, uh, on the bit and spin on me, or helicopter. So now the two holes are drilled on the one side. I'm now gonna glue the other side up. Basically the same process. I'm gonna make sure that that uh, front edge is completely uh, or perfectly lined up. And I'm really gonna take my time here, make sure that that front edge is, is where exactly where I want it to be. And then I'll clamp it and I'll check it again. And then I'll go through the same process. I'll clean it up with the rubbing alcohol. Once that's dry, um, I can drill uh, through both sides and then I can um, glue my, my, in this case, quarter inch stainless pins in place. Then I go back to the 2x72 and I'm gonna profile uh, those handles or those scales 
right on the 2x72. You can get that rounded inside edge by letting the belt hang over one side of the flat platen. It really doesn't take long. I use an, I'm using a coarse grit belt for this, about a 36 grit. Um, these, this handle material was a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to take a pencil and kind of um, mark a line where I want to bring the thickness down to. And this is just going to give me a visual reference when I'm grinding. And then I go right back onto the flat platen of the 2x72. I can do this again with a coarse grit uh, belt so it moves material pretty quick. And I can just keep a visual reference onto those uh, pencil marks and bring both sides in evenly. Now I try to do the majority of the shaping right on that 2x72. Uh, so on the flat platen, I'll kind of roll the knife uh, to roll over that, that top edge of the handles. And for the inside edge, I'll, I'll actually use that 2-inch uh, contact wheel at the bottom of the flat platen just to do um, you know, the general shaping. And this whole process really doesn't take long. Uh, then I'll use a uh, oscillating sander. I usually start with a, a, an 80 or a 220. Uh, then I go to a you know, 400, 800, 1,000, uh, and a 2,000. And in between each, I do a little hand sanding with the same grit. You really want to get off you know, all of the deeper marks um, you know, from that 60 grit belt you originally used or the 80 grit belt you originally used on the uh, on the belt grinder. I will then bring this to a buffing uh, machine, a buffing wheel with compound, um, and then I take a really good look at it, see if there's any additional scratches, um, and then most times I end up going back and, and re-sanding and re-polishing, you know, a second time, just to get out the deeper scratches. Now, uh, to add the micro bevel, um, I do it right on the, on the flat platen. I use 120 grit to start, I hold the blade at approximately 20 degrees, and then and I just establish that micro bevel. Uh, the whole process here is just to create a burr on the opposite side that you're grinding. That's what I'm checking with my fingernail there. You have to create a burr along the entire edge of the blade, and then flip the knife and do the exact same thing on the other side. Then I run through a variety of different grits. So starting at the 120, then I'll slow this machine down because I've got variable speed uh, down to about you know 20 or 30 percent. I'll go to um, 240, and at this point you're really just polishing that bevel. You're not really grinding. You're just polishing, um, and then I'll go to 800 and then uh, 2000. The 2000 I like to use a felt be uh, backed belt, and then after the 2000 I'll go to a leather stroping belt. I don't run the grinder with the leather belt. Um, I know other people do. Uh, this is just the way that I kind of taught myself. I just use the um, belt grinder to kind of hold the belt. And the flat platen is really nice, uh, firm edge. But this gives a razor sharp edge, you know, easily shaves uh, the hair on your arms. Uh, and it's very quick. You know, you can do this whole process in, in five minutes. Anyway, this is the finished product. Uh, these are the hybrid scales. Uh, the Cherry Burl uh, combined with a, a Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy mixed with some black uh, and some red uh, dye. Uh, the blade itself, as I mentioned before, is AEBL stainless steel, so it holds a great edge and has a really good corrosion resistance. Just a nice, uh, clean-looking drop point. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, I'd love it if you took the time to leave a comment in the comment section. And by all means, join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, in addition, if you want to check out the book that Jason Northgard and I uh, put out last year, Introduction to Knife Making, which can be found on Amazon.com.